Topic for today is buoyancy force. We're trying to figure out what is the equation for the buoyancy force. We're going to be like the early scientists, trying to figure out these equations, trying to learn these laws. Quick preface here. Let's do a free body diagram for like a boat sitting in water. What are the forces? Um, force of gravity. Good, got the force of gravity. But it's not accelerating downward, right? So that force of gravity has to be canceled out by something. It's canceled yeah. out by force of buoyancy. Force of buoyancy, very good. A lot of people might mistake this for a normal force, but it's actually um, the buoyancy force. So let me give you another example that might help that make a little be a little bit. So rather than a boat that actually floats on water, what if it was something that sank in water? Like what if I put a rock in the water and it were to sink? What would the forces on that be? Yeah. Well, there would be a force of gravity, but there would be a smaller force of gravity, or no force of gravity. So it still have a it still be totally affected by the force of gravity, but um, pretty much if we could put a scale in here at the bottom of the tank and then put the rock on top of the scale, it, the scale would read a smaller number than it would if we did this outside of the water. So effectively what that means is it has a normal force that's smaller than its force due to gravity and the rest of the force due to gravity is cancelled out by force buoyancy. Force buoyancy, very good. What experiments might an early scientist who doesn't yet know, hasn't yet figured out um, what the equation for the force of buoyancy is. What could we do? <laughs> the uh, stuff that I have for us to experiment with here is a boat, quote unquote, and weights. And also, like, I do know what this equation is. <laughs> yeah. So um, we could theoretically put a scale at the bottom here and weigh something. Like, like, I can just tell you what the scale would say. What experiments would you want to do? to figure out what this equation might be. Ooh, ooh, yes. ooh! Water <laughs> <Your outro. laughs> Fill this pitcher with water until it sinks. <laughs> what, right? <laughs> that is an interesting idea. Fill this up until it sinks, sinks right? Yeah. Well, let's experiment with that. Like, what if I fill this up, what's gonna happen? Oh, I was just gonna go. How would you fill up the whole thing? It would just, yeah. it just, it's going to sink pretty much to the same water level that it's at here on the inside, right? Cool. So that is a valuable experiment. That's telling us something. What else could we do? Oh, wait, there's a table in there. Good. So how much weight do you want to put? Yeah. So the biggest weight we've got is a thousand gram weight. This is a kilogram. A thousand grams is a kilogram. So if I put this in here, how far is this going to get sunk into the water? I have a scale right here. This is in milliliters, so 500 milliliters right here, 1,000 milliliters, also known as a liter. So this is one liter of water right there, 1,500 and so on. So let's see how far it sinks if I put one kilogram in it. Can you get the rough idea here? Yeah. Yeah, about a thousand. Pretty much a thousand milliliters, right? One kilogram. Also known as a thousand grams corresponds to how much displacement, how much water gets displaced. If this were a perfect experiment, it would have been right at 1,000 milliliters. That tells us something, right? Yes. So what are these variables, actually? This is mass here, right? So mass is probably going to be involved in the equation somehow, right? And then what is this? Volume. Volume, good. So somehow mass is corresponded with volume. What other variables might be in this equation? Force gravity. Acceleration due to gravity? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to just write up here some of the variables that might be involved in this equation. I'm trying to find the equation for the buoyancy force. So that is one of the variables, and that is going to be equal to some equation made up of other variables, including mass, and velocity, and acceleration due to gravity. Can you guys think of any other, anything else that might affect? Oh, thank you. Yes, it is volume, not velocity. What if this wasn't water? 
What if this was some other fluid? Like mercury. Gasoline. Yeah, imagine this was mercury. If this was liquid mercury, then do you think this would sink as far with no. a kilogram in there? No. So what is the variable we're talking about there? What is the variable that has that differs between water and mercury? Density. Density. Very good. Density is given by the Greek letter rho. This means rho. So density is probably going to be involved in here somehow, right? And what is density? What's the equation for density? Mass times volume. <laughs> Mass over volume? Mass divided by volume. So this is the density of the thing that is being displaced. So in this case, water. So density of water. These, I will go ahead and tell you that these are all of the variables that are involved in this equation. So how can we put these variables together such that this will give us the correct buoyancy force? It would help to have a little bit more data, right? We did an experiment like this with something that's floating. What about doing an experiment like this? something that sinks. What's an experiment that we could do to get some more data? We're going to want to put one of these in here so that it sinks, right? Let's use the 500 gram weight. If we put this in the water here, again, if we were doing this experiment for real, what we'd want to do is have a scale at the bottom here. If we actually had a scale at the bottom there, it would be reading 4.7 newtons. Okay? So again, we're in a situation like this where our normal force, what the scale is reading, is 4.704 newtons. What would the force of gravity be? Yeah. 4.9. 4.9. How did you get that? So the force of gravity is just mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass is 0.5 kilograms and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 gives you 4.9 newtons, but the scale is only reading 4.7 newtons. So, effectively, what this actually looks like is our normal force is almost the same size as our force due to gravity, and we're going to have a relatively small buoyancy force here that's going to be equal to what? You guys should be able to calculate that. 0.196 newtons. In this particular case, let's write out all of our variables. These are all the variables that might be involved in the equation. We've got the buoyancy force. We know that in this case, the buoyancy force is equal to 0 0.196 newtons. Mass, what's our mass? So 0 0.5 kilograms. Volume, I am estimating the volume of this weight to be approximately 20 milliliters. We don't want to use liters. Let me explain one other thing real quick. Like, where do you guys think they came up with, like, this kilogram to be used as our unit of mass? And this meter to be used as our unit of length? They first decided on this as their unit of mass, and that was a completely arbitrary decision. The mass of the kilogram was the first thing that was decided upon, but then all of the rest of the units were based on that mass. The way that they based, for example, length on this mass is using the density of water. What they said is, let's find a volume of water that, weigh, that has the same mass as this. And they defined that volume of water as a liter. Okay? So one liter weighs one kilogram, which is why we found that a thousand grams was equal to a thousand milliliters. Mm. But a liter is kind of a weird unit to use, right? Because if you think about volume, volume is really just a distance times another distance times another distance. So if our unit for distance is a meter, you think that our unit for volume would be a cubic meter, right? So, how much does a cubic meter weigh? Well, there are 1,000 liters in a cubic meter. So therefore, a cubic meter weighs 1,000 kilograms. Our volume, I estimated to be about 20 milliliters, which is 0.02 liters, which using that conversion 
gets you 0 0.00002 cubic meters. Or if you wanted to put that in scientific notation, it'd be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5. So we've got our buoyancy force, we've got our mass, we've got our volume. What's our acceleration due to gravity? 9.8 meters per second squared. And what is our density of water? Again, density is given in mass per volume. In standard units, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Buoyancy force is equal to some combination of these other variables. In this particular instance, our buoyancy force equals 0.196 newtons. So how can you arrange these other values? The buoyancy force is going to be equal to some combination of some of these other variables. It might not involve all of them, but maybe the equation is mass times volume times density divided by acceleration or something like that. Like, arrange those other things in an equation to see if you can get these values so, can you figure out the equation for the buoyancy force? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. If not, no worries. When you start the video again, I'll explain everything, and you'll still have gotten your brain engaged and primed to really learn it well. Hey! Did you get it? Yeah. What is it? It's uh, volume times acceleration due to gravity. Times rho density. Let's confirm that. Volume here is 2 times 10 to the negative 5. Acceleration to gravity is 9.8. And rho is 1,000 kilograms per meter squared. If you put this in your calculator, is it equal 0 0.196? Yes. That is the equation. You guys figured out the equation for points but there are multiple ways of writing this equation because what does density equal what mass. is the formula for density mass over volume yeah mass over volume so i could also write this as the buoyancy force is equal to volume times the acceleration due to gravity times mass over volume mass over volume which means these volumes cancel out, and you can say that the force due, or the buoyancy force is equal to the acceleration due to gravity times the mass of what? This was density. So this is the mass of, this is the density of water. So this is the mass of the water divided by the volume of water displaced. This is the mass of the water. This is another useful equation. So that's another way to write it. Does this look familiar to you? Acceleration times mass? Mass times yes. acceleration? That's the force due to gravity. Force due to gravity is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So you could also say the buoyancy force is equal to, this is weight, right? The force of gravity is weight. This is equal to the weight of what? Water. The weight of the water displaced. That is Archimedes' principle. Archimedes principle says that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of water displaced. So that's usually how this is taught. Normally they're like, okay, how do we find buoyancy force? Well, Archimedes principle is that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of water displaced, and from that you can get to this equation, and from this equation you can get to this equation. Yeah. So to get something to flow, you just have to displace more water in the ways. That's how we get the aircraft carriers and stuff to float. That is one of the problems that we're doing. These are the two main equations that you're going to need to be using for our assignment today. 